Hey guys, it's Ryan from Resume2Offer.com. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, just got off of a uh, you know group call one-on-one -on -one with uh, kind of our, our tech sales people over at higher levels. Feel free to check out in the description a little bit more about that if you're looking for a job in tech sales is a good route to go through. So I'm not gonna do any editing because I just don't feel like it today. So, <laughs> so we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the applicant tracking system. So this whole video is gonna be all about the ATS things you should know how to optimize your resume, how to optimize different things in, in kind of key terms. What is the applicant tracking system and how does it all work? You know, what like we'll, we'll kind of go from A to Z. Um, I was on a group call this this week. This became a very hot topic and a, apparently a lot of people got some great value out of it. So I thought I would kind of repeat some of this material for kind of everybody else, okay? So what is the ATS? So when you hear ATS, what is that? ATS stands for the Applicant Tracking System, okay? It is the system similar to a CRM used in sales to track all the candidates that the recruiter or talent acquisition gets. It helps organize and manage all the resumes, what stage they are in the process, um, all the documentation for like, hey, we're gonna send an offer letter, you know, budget, all that stuff. It's really just a software kind of gathering with all the information all together. And I've actually helped um, as a consultant with different companies with their ATS systems. So nowadays, you, we see the emergence of AI coming into the ATS system. So that's very, very significant. The about, uh, ATSs are not new. They've been around for a long time, um, at least since I've started recruiting, <laughs> you know, and that's been about like, you know, 12 years now. And we've seen ATSs come, um, there's hundreds of them on the market. However, AI is beginning to step into this. So AI, five years ago, 5% of companies had AI. At the timing of this one, with in regards to kind of the tech world, 40% use AI as part of their applicant tracking system. Very significant. Over the next year or two, it's probably gonna be 80%, okay? So this is something you need to know. Um, it's something that's very, very important. And what it does when AI kind of becomes involved is that you have they you know the recruiter will post a job you know they'll get hundreds if not thousands of candidates depending on the role usually you know a lot of people uh, tune into cybersecurity sales or tech sales in this channel so if i post a job i get about two to three thousand applications in like a week especially if it's remote if it's local it's a lot you know more manageable but a remote one i get thousands what the ats does it takes all those resumes and it searches them, it looks for key terms, it looks for certain things in the resume, and then it whittles it down to the top 50, maybe the top 100, depending on the demographics I give it, the, the filters, but it'll give me the top 50 to 100 resumes that has the highest probability of being the best candidates. So basically it maximizes my time. It takes that huge deck, makes it small. So then I go through all those resumes, those 50 to 100 and look at them individually because I can't go through thousands. Just don't have the time. So this is why it's very, very important to have a um, ATS optimized resume. Because if you don't, you know, it's not like it's impossible to get a job. You can still get a job, but it is it is working smart. It's working smarter. Your probability is going to go up that you'll get one sooner. So it's very, very important to do so. If you want a custom ATS resume, you can go to my website. I offer services to custom write it for you. Another way is I have templates. They're completely free. You can check in the description of, it's like a, kind of a Google folder that I put, you know, different different resources for you guys. Okay, so you can use that too and, and use that, but obviously a custom one is, is better. So that's kind of the ATS, what that is, and how AI is kind of playing a significant thing. So there's three areas that the ATS kind of ranks your sheet. It kind of ranks your resume. Okay, so three different things. Number one is the vocabulary you're using. Is the vo vocabulary consistent with actually what the job is. Is it people that they know in the industry? And they look at certain vocabulary. So if you're in sales, they look at, have you, is there, is there a resume, is there keywords that are getting picked up such as lead generation, cold calling, appointment setting, full cycle sales, things like that. So you wanna make sure you're using the right vocabulary. How do you find out the right vocabulary? 
you look at not just one job description, but about 10, 10 is a good sample size. Look at 10 job descriptions of the position that you are trying to go after. And you look for certain key terms that stand out to you. Okay. If you notice that 80% of them, you all use the same key terms. That's a pretty good bet that those are the key terms that the ATS is pulling on. That's going to be ranking them. Okay. So just, that's a good little hint on what key terms you can start implementing. So you got key terms or vocabulary and synergistic. Second thing is tools. What tools are you using? In the sales world, they're looking at, right, have you used LinkedIn Sales Navigator? Have you used a CRM? Um, in other areas, you know, there's different, if, you, if you're looking at, you know, business analysis, you know, they look at JIRA or Power BI. So you have to be able to use certain tools. What software tools are consistent in this industry or this role? Same idea. You can look at 10 job descriptions, look at the tools. It's under the requirements section, like of technology that you need to know. Right? You pick like the top three things. And those are things you can put on the resume. Make sure you don't lie about it. Like do your research so you know what those tools are and ideally can do it so you can put it on the resume. So you got vocabulary, um, keywords, tools. For salespeople, I would recommend you also put a sales methodology framework. Okay, there's several out there. Challenger, spin selling, bant selling, bunch of different ones. Do your research on different ones. Pick the pick one or two that work best for you and try to put that on the resume. Okay? Those are like key terms that the ATS is going to like start looking in the resume and give you a probability score. Now we'll take it a step further. Okay? When an ATS actually costs the same amount as a person. Okay? So if I as a recruiter uh, when I was running a recruiting desk, like a full recruiting desk, I had about eight recruiters working under me. And we used uh, a certain ATS system that didn't have a lot of AI. Okay. Now, you know, this is not that long ago, but like in the last two years, all of a sudden you can get the same job done with two or three recruiters with an AI ATS system. Now the AI ATS system costs a lot of money. It costs between, you know, depending on the complexity, 50 to 75 K on a yearly subscription. So bigger companies are gonna be using the AI ATS system. Smaller companies probably don't yet have that budget, so they're probably, probably gonna to stick to ATS systems that are kind of like just the general version that might have a little bit of AI, but not that sophisticated. The top ones are usually the bigger tech companies are definitely using this. So you need to kind of know that to know what kind of ATS system and what they're looking for. If it's a smaller company, you, you have a, a, a much better chance that they're gonna see your resume versus if you're with it, if you're trying to go after a big company, say like Salesforce, you're trying to go after like Microsoft, Google, Salesforce, um, you, I bet you they're using a very sophisticated AI ATS system. Now for companies, what they do is that these big companies will look at the top performers in their company. So say if you're going into sales, they'll look at, okay, we got a thousand salespeople. Let's look at the top 10%, okay? Let's look at the top 20%. Let's look at the top 10%. Let's look at our guys who are in the president's club and see what makes them unique. What makes, what are the common denominators that they have? Okay. Then they create three to five, what's called candidate profiles. Okay. Here are the buckets. Here are the profiles. It's the same thing if you're in sales and you're looking at customer profiles. Okay. Candidate prof profiles. A lot of this stuff is like, interchangeable if you if you read between the lines but they'll create three to five of these candidate profiles and then plug them into the ATS so when the ATS actually is going through and searching all these resumes it's saying like oh this is a probability match with this candidate profile meaning that they're more likely to succeed in our company they're more likely to also out of all these resumes these 50 had the highest probability of also being similar top earners or top sellers or top achievers in our company. They have the biggest probability match. It's kind of how that works. Okay. For other companies that are smaller, usually they, they haven't been around long enough to 
maybe have top achievers or have people that they're like, hey, let's, let's get our, you know, if they have like 100 people, who's our top achievers? It might be only like three people. So what ATSs will do is they'll actually sell like, hey, we have knowledge in the marketplace of like what top achievers there, you know, what our ATS is designed to look for top achievers based on hundreds of other industries and other sales companies. So part of the package that the ATS does is, is make sure that like, hey, you're, you're getting candidate um, uh, profiles that are already like templates that are already pre-installed into your ATS system. So then it does all the work for you. Bigger companies, when they have, they have a lot more uh, people in their company, they can just draw on the sample size within the company. For smaller companies, it's taken from a bunch of other industries or past performance sales companies, okay? So that's a, that's a lot I know. <laughs> like, what? what? <laughs> but um, that's kind of how it works. So what can you do? Okay, what can you do about all this stuff? Some things that you can do. Number one, okay, you need to optimize your ATS. There's kind of areas of the, the interview process you wanna get really good at. Number one is your own outbound effort, right? You have to be aware of like, you know, okay, how much outbound am I doing? How many applications am I doing? How many interviews am I doing? You know, how am I doing on a consistent basis? You have your own outbound effort. Second is then the resume. Okay, you wanna make sure your resume is applicant tracking system optimized. You have either done your homework and done your own research and you'd be able to like incorporate all this stuff into a resume or you can hire me and do that. That's another way you can, do, you can go. Um, then the third thing is actually the interview skills. You know, obviously once you get down to it, if you get past the ATS and you start talking to the recruiter, first stage, second stage, third stage, you have to be able to sell yourself. Sells 101. You gotta sell yourself first. So how are you coming across in the interview? Are you filling a certain customer pers uh, candidate persona that they're looking for? Are you a synergistic with the company culture? You know, do you know, have you done your proper research? Can you answer effective uh, questions? If you're doing sales, can you do an effective mock sales call? Very important. So that, that group of 50 is gonna come down to a group of 20. That group of, group of 20 is gonna come down to three candidates. And the three candidates, one of them's gonna no get an offer. So you, you, you have to learn how to stand out in the interview. It's kind of the components right there. Um, anything else? Anything else? With the ATS thing, with the ATS uh, program and the system, you want to also reflect the, the candidate personas, okay, the candidate profile. You want to be able to reflect that in your own presentation. Ones that they really like, if you had to like identify certain buckets, and I'm, I'm speaking to kind of the sales audience, this is going to be different for other industries and companies. If you're trying to get into sales, they look for people who come from a discipline background. They come from people that come from a self-improvement background, and usually somebody that comes from an analysis background. So sometimes it's good in your interview to demonstrate that you have certain qualities from all three candidate personas. You know, some of them, some companies have five candidate personas. So you have to identify what the personas are and then use your presentation abilities and storytelling abilities to show, show that you are congruent with some of those, those uh, personas, okay? Very, very, very key. Very, very key. So I hope that was helpful. Um, that's a little bit about the applicant tracking systems and ATS systems and kind of how they look for and what they look for. Um, they look for, so I hope that helps. Feel free, if you wanna use any of the resources, they're in the description below. You can check out my website. You can definitely uh, you know, schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. If you want me to take a look at your resume, feel free to send it to me. Uh, use some of the free resources. Obviously, I'm a big partner with Higher Levels. That is a tech sales bootcamp. You can use my referral link in the description below. If you use that link, you get a discount and you get a free one-on-one -on -one with me, okay? I strongly recommend using that one-on-one -on -one that you're in the interview process. You can use it whenever, but in you're in the interview process, that way we can work on how you present yourself to certain companies, what to look for, how to overcome objections or overcome kind of the questions that they're gonna be giving you. And then also your mock sales call or any type of mock call or example presentation you have to do, okay? So I hope that was helpful. Happy Friday. Um, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to go and do some outdoor stuff this weekend. So it's going to be fun. Anyway, guys, cheers. Have a good one.